Okay, so this is my Adair track for my Argo. And you can see that the hinge tore out right here. So what I'm gonna to attempt to do, this has got stripped out. So I'm going to grind this so it's flat on each side so I can get a pair of vice grips on it and pry it off of there. So we'll see how that goes. So that's one. And the other one's stripped down the top too, so we'll end up doing the same thing to it here, because we'll have to take this entire grouser off and we'll scoot this grouser back about a half an inch or so, cut this off. So um, we'll check back in when I have this off. Okay, so I got that other screw out. Now I want to take this hinge off. I got all new hardware to put this together, so I'm not worried about trying to salvage any of this. I mean, it's. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to right behind those bolts, I'm going to cut it off right there. And I'll measure how much that is, and that's about how much I'll scoot this grouser back in the end, probably. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this grouser as a guide. Or saw on that. Well, this is my Wyoming saw. It's really my meat saw. This is my backpack. should pull back into it like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna drill holes for these and I have a special kind of drill bit that they told me to get. They said you shouldn't just use a plain drill bit. What they recommended was that you use a hole punch like you'd cut with leather and use that to drill through it. And apparently by drilling through it that way, it kind of melts the cords a little bit instead of just cutting them and it's supposed to make it stronger. Of course, have you ever tried to do anything and had the battery not die? Okay, here we are again. Okay, that one is done. <laughs> done. Okay, so now, let's see if it fits on there. Huh. Looks like I drilled them in the right place. That's like some kind of miracle of science. Okay, and then I got nylon lock nuts to put on here because that's what it originally came with. So stick with their factory choice here. Before I do anything else, one of the first things I did was I made sure that these things were square. Check them again here. Gonna mark 
this one and this was the janked up side you can see it got bent up here a little bit but I think once we tighten everything down it's going to be golden So I'm going to tighten those down, and I've shortened this track by about three quarters of an inch. And when I talked to the guys at Adair, they said cut off about three quarters of an inch, so I feel good about that. And now this side, this track is going to be three quarters of an inch shorter than the other side, which isn't much. And what they, so this is what they said, which is totally true. Every Argo tire is a different size. When you set these Argos up, you have to look and see, measure every single tire and put them in a certain order. And so three quarters of an inch from one side to the other isn't much, but what I'm gonna do is measure the four corner tires on the machine because those have the greatest bearing on, um, on the size of the side. And I'll put this track here, the shorter track, on the side that needs a shorter track. And so it actually might end up turning out to be closer than it should have, closer than it was anyway, just because of the tires. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. We're going to scoot this grouser all the way to this and put the grouser back on. And what I did, you can see, I moved this belting as far forward as I could. I should still be able to get a bolt through here, hopefully. Um, if not, I'll take this back off and trim that back a little bit. But I wanted as much meat as I could get in this so that it, this wouldn't happen again. And when I talked to the guys at Adair, they said this doesn't happen very often. Um, and I suspect it was probably operator error. These tracks are built hell for stout. They do a really nice job with them. And one of the cool things, I think, is anytime I've had something that I had concerns about, I call them, and they've been awesome about dealing with me. So I think their customer service is super, super great. Yeah, I'll be able to get a bolt through there in the end, so that's good. So we'll tighten this other side down now. I put the other side of the hinge right there so that I could make sure that this goes on this side of it. And the same thing over here, this goes on this side of it. I didn't want to put them on backwards. That'd be something I would do, by the way. Now we'll scoot this track ahead as far as we can get it against that hinge. Okay, this is a T30 Torx bit. Midgey poo. All right, so that is repaired. I'm pretty excited about that. These gashes in here are no big deal. These tracks are hard as heck. Um, I have zero problems with that. And so now I'm gonna get the machine out here and we'll look at figuring out where everything goes and get these on the right side. <laughs> Since I have children, my cloth tape measure is, of course, gone. So I'm using this. It'd be better to get cloth, but this, as long as I'm the same inaccurate on everything, it'll be fine. So one thing that I have done is I've put exactly five pounds of air pressure on each tire. I've done measuring everything, and. On this side, on the right side, I had to put a spare tire on here, so I had to rearrange the tires. And so when you set up tracks, the biggest tire should be the second tire back. The next biggest tire should be the third tire back. 
the next biggest tire is the last tire and then the smallest tire goes on the front and so I have mine set up so it's 79 and a half 81 80 and 80 and so this is set up for tracks the other side I didn't do anything to so I'm confident it's fine but so let's compare the four corners now this is 80 and 79 and a half this other side is 80 and a half and 80 and a half so this side is the larger side so I'm going to put my shortened track on the right side here easy peasy lemon squeezy so we'll look at that in just a second Now I'm going to take the valve stem out of all four corners to flatten those tires and the, that reduces the circumference of the track all the way around and makes the solution jacket together. I'm sure there's lots of ways to do this and somebody might have a cooler way but this works pretty good for me. So this is just a ratchet strap and I've threaded it back into itself. And the bolt goes on the outside of these, so it ends up having to thread through this way. This is the one that's important in terms of direction. This one needs to have the nut on the tire side because you don't want it rubbing up against your the tub of your machine. And this one probably doesn't matter which way it goes. The threads are going to get chewed up on gravel and stuff no matter what, but this one does matter because you don't want this extra part somehow rubbing up against your tub. And there's a nylon nuts. We don't need that anymore, do we? back up, put the valve stems in, put the tires up. Okay, now when you pump these tires up, the first one is at five, the next two are at seven, seven, and then the back one is at six. And that kind of matches how, how big they're supposed to be. So it's kind of a way to ensure the tires remain in the correct order in terms of the biggest is on the drive axle. All right, they're all pumped up. We'll take a look at it here in just a second. Okay, so once you inflate the tires, 
it tightens that track back up. You can see that's nice and tight. And so this baby is ready to go move something again. 